Ladies and gentlemen, or should I say gamers, today we're going to be doing a how to play Byzantine guide like a professional gamer. And um, I tried recording it two days ago, but I was kind of feeling like a pupega and I don't know, I feel like I feel like I want to redo it. I want to get a good one out there. So here we are. Here we are. Mm, let's go with that. So we're gonna be doing how to play Byzantine, uh, like I mentioned, and um, I'm gonna try to do different builds for you guys so that you get a good feel of you know different styles and all that. Um, but in general, I'm gonna try to do what's you know more meta and not like weird stuff that you guys can recreate. I'm gonna explain my thought process, and once again, I have done this type of video with every sieve so far up until Byzantine and Japanese, not including Ottoman and Malian, and not including the variant civs, which we will still do. Okay, so... We're starting off good here. Now, I like to open with a farm with Byzantine. I have seen a lot of players have stopped doing that at a high level because um, since the farm uh, cost got increased, but I still like doing it. Have in mind, right now as of recording this video, this is 70 wood, but I think it's getting increased to 75, right? Twitch chat can correct me on this, but I think it's getting increased to 75. So then I would probably stop doing this because you kind of need to do another trip, which at that point, you know, screw it. But I'll do it this game, maybe next games I'm just gonna do it without it so we can get used to the new patch that's literally coming as of recording today in two days, the new patch I think is coming out, so yeah. Anyway, uh, at the end of the video, we're going to talk about strengths and weaknesses of Byzantine. And if you managed to catch the last time I tried recording this, then you got double guide. Double guide, double entertainment, double the, the coaching value, if you will. Now, we're playing against Rus. There's a lot of things we can do here against the Rus. A lot, a lot of things. But in general... Um, I could, I could do, like, actually so many things against Rus right now. I could go for two Town Center. I could go for uh, All In. I could go for a Castle Rush. The reason for that is Rus is kind of, of a slow Civ. So, you know, you don't feel the pressure like, oh my god, I'm going to die if I don't do this or do that. It's, you kind of have a lot more time to play with, to chill, and do whatever you want, right? So it's completely up to you what you want to do. In general, against Knight Sibs, um, going Javelin Throwers plus um, Limited A is always a good choice, and you can't really go wrong with it, you know? It's one of those where it's like, yeah, that's a good choice, right? Now, for the sake of it, since um, going to PC Byzantine, I think it's possible in a lot of matchups. It's not very common at the top level. And I think it's not common because just one TC Biz is very, very strong. Just, you know, doing the push with mercenaries and all that. So people don't tend to do it. But I think two TC is also quite good. And you can pull it off against some civs that are like more macro, like China or Jushi or Rus and stuff like that. Let's see what he's going for on this side of that. He's going Golden Gate, okay? So this is either a Castle Rush, or he's going to buy wood in order to... Or sorry, buy stone in order to age up. The way you can see that is if he chop, if he mines 50 stone, that means he's going to be uh, buying the rest of the stone and aging up. But so far, I ain't seeing any of that. So I'm not sure yet what he is planning to do. Still not. So this might be a castle rush, it might not. I'm not seeing anything yet. And I'm just gonna be... I'm just gonna stay on these resources for now. I was gonna do, do two town center, but maybe I'm just gonna age up uh, slowly. We'll see. Sometimes you, you don't want to just go for a build, right? You want to see what the opponent is doing react to it. Uh, he still has tickets, so he hasn't used it. This may, might be a lot of things. This might be Pro Scouts. This might be second PC still. This might be 8 on food, 9 on food. He's making Wooden Fortress. I'm just gonna, since I don't know what he's doing. 
I'm just gonna play it super safe. And um, I'm just gonna go for one TC making units kind of play and then just adjust based what he is doing. So I'm just gonna do the standard thing. I was gonna do 2 TC, but again, I have Rus Fast Castle, it hits pretty fast. So I don't wanna. Okay, he sold something for gold. Okay. Uh, okay, there's a knight. Yeah, so he's doing some something. TBD, what that something is. Now I'm gonna go Javelin Throwers. Why Javelin Throwers? Javelin Throwers is really good into Rus. Because um, you get two things. You get javelins to kill the archers or horse archers against Rus. But another thing that you um, get is actually the... Um, you get the ability in castle to get camels, which are obviously going to be very good if Rus is going for more cavalry based style. Uh, but yeah, this is... I, again, I'm not sure what he's doing, so we're just going to play it safe. I'm trying to scout a little bit to find out what else is going on, but so far no success. Okay, Knight should be out somewhere and it's either gonna hit here or here. Yeah, he still has a Mind Stone. Um, he still has a Mind Stone, which means that he's most likely just maybe making a Knight and going Fast Castle or something like that. He is exposed um, on that deer pack over there. So maybe that's something that I'm going to try to exploit a little bit. And you know what? I'm just gonna say I haven't seen any archer ranges, so I'm actually gonna just move out now. And I'm gonna get plus one damage upgrade first. Why am I getting plus one damage? Is because I haven't seen any archers, and I want to try to do as much damage to these knights as possible. I got bears in the back, which is very nice. I can do some small walls like this, which are gonna help me defend. I can get the house upgrade, which is actually very, very good and very underrated, I feel like. The house upgrade is super nice. It gives you so much vision. So if I put a house here, it's going to give me so, so much vision um, down there in case I get harassed or something. And they build faster, so if you mess up your macro, you're completely okay. Okay. I got the eco upgrade, so now he has to run. So that's a win for me. Now I'm gonna go on these over here and I'm gonna start rallying to gold. And if you look now, um, I can already start transitioning to maybe castle. I'm just playing it safe, I'm not risking anything. And from here on out, even if he is going fast castle, it's completely okay for me. It's not the end of the world. I don't see pro scouts, especially because he is on um went on deer here right he wouldn't go there because he has pro scouts right doesn't make sense okay a lot of units i'm gonna get caught off guard a little bit here but i'm gonna just try to trade you can't run away from knight armies so i'm just gonna try to trade instead as much as i can He's playing like weird 1TC Rus, which is not very, very common. And I'm getting plus one range attack or range armor. Sorry. Are these guys gathering sheep? Why is there a sheep there? What the hell? And this is why I like uh, why I like Biz. Like now you can just slowly transition out of this game. You know, like it, I'm not panicking. I'm not like, oh my god, I gotta make towers. I gotta do this. I gotta do that. I, I, I just chill. We can make a house here for more vision. We can make a house in the back. So if there's ever units running by or something, you can quickly um, see them and, and kind of deal with them. So make sure to use these houses to your advantage. Let me make one here. And this is a big army again, and I know he's committed to making archers and archer ranges. So now, 
what I can do is I can just stop making um, units except mercenaries and just age up uh, at the same time. So he's got a scout here. Okay. I don't want to deny that. Okay, minus one. That's good. He's got some knights there. I'm harassing over here. I'm going to rally onto the sheep just so I'm able to age up. The fact that he's not pushing kind of leads me to believe that he wants to age up. Ooh, that's gross. Let's get a ram as well for good measure. Now I have my whole base walled off which is really really nice. Um, and later on by the way you can make these houses all over the map which is really nice. So I can make a house there just to get vision. It's only 50 wood. So that's something you can do as well. Now he does have blacksmith upgrades and I'm gonna be more careful this time around. I'm not gonna run in like a headless chicken. I'm gonna use my scout first to scout what he's doing. He's still not on these. Oh, he's on the boar over here. Okay, that's something I can attack. That's a lot of units. Okay, see, I see that and I say, okay, we're not going there. That is a lot of units. He is... Oh, I can kill this? I think this is his third scout. So, I don't need to push out. He's got a lot of units, okay? And I'm going to scale a lot better if I just age up here. Because I'm going to upgrade my gel and and I get access to camels. So, we're just going to... We're just going to go back. And that's something you need to recognize as Byzantine. You don't need to just go for it and YOLO and all in. Right, you can just say, you know what, that's a lot of units. I could trade, but I don't need to, right? I'm starting my farms, my farming is looking good. I'm having more and more units, I'm gonna get this tower up here. Uh, I got good cisterns over here, and you can say, all right, now let's do a little age up. We're gonna do it right there. Mm -hmm. We can go for some stone. Actually, I'm just gonna use a couple of them, not too many. Okay. Now I'm aging up. I'm gonna upgrade his tower, although he seems to have mostly archers, which is usually how you want to play against Biz. Um, because you want to overwhelm the javelin tower numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not gonna go on these deer in the back. I'm gonna age up. I'm just gonna go on, um, on the sheep over here. Let's add another barracks. I'm gonna age up here, which is really good. And I can get a mangonel tower over here. Boom, right there. So instead of making another cistern, I'm gonna make a mangonel tower. We're gonna switch to Dialecticus so I can research upgrades faster because I want my upgrades to finish ASAP. And this is a really rough spot for him. So he kinda has to go, right? Because he's very, very far behind. We're gonna activate the shields. I, I didn't see. I had javelin throwers in queue, I did not see that. Mm -hmm. But it's okay. This fight should be more than enough for me to win this. Now I did lose some workers, but I didn't lose too too many. We're gonna switch back to the production thing. Mm -hmm. We're gonna kill all those. We can garrison just to get some more value in there. And we're making Varangian guards. That Mangonel tower is gonna make it really, really difficult for him to do anything. We got some jabs on the bottom. And now what we want to do is not stay back. We don't want to stay back scared now. He either, because he's lost his whole army, he either has to A, remake the army, or B, age up. In that case, 
I'm winning either way. Why? Because I either attack and I'm fighting with castle army into feudal army. Or he's aging up and then he has no units and I can do some damage and potentially kill him. Now, sometimes you can kind of mess up and overextend and end up losing like the whole army. Okay, he is aging up, so I do want to push. Okay. So that's something you got to be careful. I'm going to make a house here for vision. And we go again. I'm making a lot of Varangian guards. I'm making um, another aqueduct for the income. Look at the units that I'm printing. Now, you can make your... Um, okay. You can make a monastery and put relics there for gold, or you can also just put the relics in um, the other thing for um, oil. That's up to you. Camels go there. These Varangian guards are going to do a good job tanking. Camels are going to do a good job taking care of these guys. He's going for my javelin throwers, which is okay. And now we're going to keep pushing. One thing I can do is add a barracks and get some crossbows as well, which would be pretty good. Let's go to the top right. I know there was a boar earlier. He might be on the boar still, or he might not. I'm going to go for the back goal. Because I don't want to take any unnecessary damage now. So I don't want to risk having my stuff forward, basically. Okay, we got a bunch of camel or a bunch of knights. So I'm going to stop making Varangian guards and I'm going to switch to full Limitane now. Because he has crossbows, so I don't want to basically counter myself. Okay, let's not fight there. I got a lot of javelins coming, so we'll just fight then. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're getting relics. I mean, if I get, um, if I get a good amount of relic, like three relics against Rus, I would say that's a that's a win. Um, let's make more camels because I feel like I have enough javelin throwers to do some good damage. Let's get eco upgrades here in the back. And I'm going to get a second town center now. Because I don't want to completely all in. I'm sending these three guys in the back. Because he's most likely there with some units. I'm going to actually also check here. Oh, he took that. Okay, I'm going to try to intercept it. I'm going to get these upgrades as well. Okay, he does have a gathering there. That's good to know. Wow, wow, is very nice. Since the minute is there, Covenant takes over to Raid up. You had a good stream. Can I intercept that? Mm. I'm trying. I don't think I'll be able to. But, oh, look at that. TC stopped. That's very nice. Very, very nice. Let's get Sacred Sites. Let's get the rest of the upgrades. I'm going to try to stop that. Let's get second town center. And now we want to use javelins to kill all these crossbows. Now my army is not perfect. I would prefer to have Limitane instead of these... Um, uh, what's it called? Merengue guards because they're kind of getting blasted now. But I it is okay. I hope you have a fantastic quiz of using day for the guide. I'm doing my workout routine while watching my fave streamer. Thank you brother, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Javelin throw are still doing work. And I can disengage here. I killed all his knights, so I reset his knight count pretty hard. Which is very, very nice. So we can just say, you know what? That was a decent trade. I'll let's just go back a bit. And what I want to do now is because my farm transition is kind of delayed, right? It's not really there yet. So I'm going to focus heavily on getting my farm transition. These guys are going to harass on the right. And I'm going to push the same side again. Let's get some of those upgrades. When you guys finish, you can go on this stone. 
I could just make a little chiropractor there, as I like to call them. Look how many villagers I have now on uh, wood. And he's got a lot of crossbows, right? A lot, a lot of crossbows. So that's very nice for me. Let's get some eco upgrades. Now he probably ran already. So we're just gonna try to find his villagers. Oh, they're still here. Oh, he has a wooden fortress there too. Okay. Look at this. Let's just get farming up. I'm just investing a lot of resources into that right now. I'm getting sacred sites as well. And I can actually just go for this. I don't need a ram because I have a good amount of melee units. So let's just go for it. I'm gonna run a bit, run a bit, run a bit. Wait for the other units to arrive. And now let's use our jabs to kill his stuff. So now even if I lose this army, if I get this TC, I'm getting further and further ahead in eco, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that looks like it's gonna build down. And let's just trade out as much as I can. Again, I like that trade. Could be better, could be worse. Let's make more farms. It is pretty important to place your farms well and in a good spot as biz because you're gonna get a lot of value from that. I'm gonna keep making javelin throwers because he has um, quite a lot of um, crossbows and stuff. Let's get a cistern here for that increased mining over here. He cleaned that up. He's making another TC. That's fine. Now what we can do is we can take these five guys and say, you know what, let's go for sacred sites, but let's not go with keep. Let's just go with Mangonel Towers. Mangonel Towers are really strong. So no reason not to do something like that. I got too much gold. We can even make a market and like maybe rebalance our eco or something. Let's get the, uh, that upgrade as well. So right now I'm feeling pretty good. Um, okay, just trying to decap that. Mm, I'm not sure if I can get there in time actually. I'm gonna send my monk just in case to recap if I can't get there in time. And I can also put, I'm gonna use a lot of workers here for this wood, so I'm gonna also make a cistern there. Mangonel tower. Okay, that's gonna get a decap, but it's all right. I feel in a like a very very good spot right now and let's also make a siege workshop because I know he has mangonels and because I have better economy I should be able to match him in siege battles and just win straight up. Mm -hmm. Send those there, I have a guy patrolling here just to cover that. And that's looking good, we can upgrade some of those too. Make sure to have a cistern around your golden horn tower because it's also going to increase production speed of the free units you're getting. And now watch this. We can do something like this, right? And I love this is what I love about biz. You can do stuff like this. Just place houses randomly like that. It's so good. Look at this. Just check my map vision in like a couple of seconds. Okay. Or like in 30 seconds. Just check my map vision. It's going to be crazy good. Mm -hmm. Okay, 37 on food. This is very, very good eco right now. Let's delete that. Okay. My army is looking very, very good. I'm making some crossbows. Okay, he's got an army there. I'm just gonna send all my melee units there to deal with that. I'm just gonna try fight this. Now what does he have? A lot of crossbows. So I'm just gonna go limit an A crossbow javelin throw or something like that. We're gonna go for these. Okay. 
I'm just gonna go like three, four Springles. I just wanna overmake so I can push and end the game. Now we're putting him on a sacred side timer, which is nice. Next thing I can do is maybe block these golds right here. I'm gonna make another tower here. Get a mango and upgrade on that too. Okay. I'll just kite back. I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. Now I have a mangonel tower here. So he probably doesn't want to fight either there. Now, look at my vision now. You see that? That's houses. That's not towers. That's houses. And guess what? You gotta build houses anyway. So why not build them in, in good, good positions? I'm almost capped. I got sacred sites. I got control of the golds. I got 40 farms. I can make some more if I want. Let's do that. Let's make five more for good measure. He's going there. Let's join him. Mm -hmm. Let's make, we're gonna make a keep here because I want to get that gold. That's the gold I want to mine first. We can target fire some units and I mean look at this army. I mean I don't want to say it but that's kind of pathetic. For this point in the game, that ain't a lot. And the Byzantine unit printer never stopped making. So uh, let's send these limit, let's send some units inside of the sacred site. Not a good hit from him. Okay. We got Springles. I can age up in a second. So, GG. so look at my map vision. This is all houses. So even if he comes and kills your house, you still get a notification where his army is and stuff like that. So it's very, very nice. Very, very nice. So yeah, I think that was a pretty clean game and it kind of shows... I think this is a good game to show something that is very hard to show. And that is what to do when you don't know what your opponent is, is doing, right? Like if you have no clue what your opponent is doing, not because you didn't scout. It's like you're scouting, but you're like, what the hell is this guy doing? Maybe you're not, you know, very high rank. Maybe you don't understand what's going on. What I just did there is very good to do against that. Or if you lose your scout and you're like, ooh, I don't know what I'm playing against. What I did there is very good. Now against other Civ, maybe you could go longbows or javelin throwers, that's up to you. But javelin throwers make the engagements really hard and they pair up really well with limited A because limited A counter cavalry, javelins counter ranged units and so on and so forth. Byzantine is very similar to English, how you want to take engagements. Uh, it's like you gotta be very precise where you want to fight and if you overextend the worst thing that can happen is um you losing your like javelin throwers or longbows and resetting that count all right game number two ladies and gentlemen here we go we just spent 15 minutes in queue but you know what we're going on the ladders i'm trying my best not to do custom games because i don't want people to be oh it's rigged you know what i mean this is a uh, honest to god true ladder experience ladder experience right here what map is this hi mayaima okay okie dokie all right we got english versus byzantine now this is one of the so i would say byzantine has a lot of good matchups this is one of the matchups that um I feel like are more even and it can go um, either way, right? I don't think you're favored. I don't think English is favored. I think it's all right for both. And there's a lot of options and things that both players can do. So, um, as a Byzantine player, you can play this a lot of different ways. Um, you can go for an all-in if you want. Um, you can go... I don't know, you can go for, or, you know, 2TC, the English is going 2TC, you can go Fast Castle. Like I said, there's a lot of options that you can do. And you can even go Hippodrome. This is one of the matchups where Hippodrome is actually quite nice to do. Especially if the English is going Council or something, going Hippodrome is pretty, pretty good. 
Did I see a sheep there? No, I did not. Okay. But, in general, I think in this matchup, uh, going for, like, every matchup is a Byzantine, unless you're 100% sure your opponent's gonna attack and all in or whatever. Uh, Hippodrome can be good, but I would say Grand Winery is just safer. Now, Imperial Hippodrome is actually crazy good. For example, if I knew this guy's going Council Hall all in, right? 100% this guy's doing it. You go Hippodrome and you have a really strong ability. One of the strongest abilities in the game, which is the Hippodrome ability that heals your um, your horses or your cavalry and gives them, I think it's 20 or 25% damage. So it's very, very, very strong. Okay. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now, brother? But we're gonna go for the winery. Like I said, you can go Hippodrome. It's nothing... You're not doing anything special. Um, you just don't have winery, but you're gonna have stronger cavalry, right? So it's, it's like a trade-off. Now, he did a pretty good scouting pattern. He went... He saw me here and cut, cut the, the running there. Which means he's gonna get a good amount of sheep. But luckily, both him and I are playing a sieve that doesn't need a lot of sheep. So, that's nice. Now, uh, playing against English, I would definitely... Ooh, okay, I got the upper hand here. He got, he got, uh, probably caught up there in the trees or something. Or something, because I'm about to get in there. Now, this system is very good. It gives me the dialecticus to all the buildings there, so researchers are going to be faster, which is very nice. And what it does is it covers all my resources to get extra, you know, um, gathering rate right there. Second system probably gonna be here because I want to cover the the front lines um, or the, the the front here with stone and berries as well. Now he is going to TC. I could go to TC as well here. Mm, I could go to TC. Let's see, he's going king. Okay, let's go to TC, let's match him. Just to show you guys how to do it and how I would do it. Now I'm gonna get this cistern because I want to boost my gather rates. And we're just gonna go for that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get wheelbarrow because I have enough gold for that. So I feel like it's pretty good. Also, I'm going to be moving my workers left and right, so might as well. Now, in general, I could have gone for, um, what are they called? I could have gone for Limitane and then get this safer, but because he's been, he's aging up very slowly with this landmark, I should have enough time to, um, get my stone and kind of get out of there. I'm gonna finish this thing with my good villager and realistically I or not realistically but in perfect situation I want to put my TC here but because he's playing English and he has a king I can't do that so I might put second TC like there or maybe there or something like that we'll see we will see the king should be coming out in like 20 seconds and then it's gonna take another 15 to get to my base so that's something that I should be worried about, but he should have a faster second town center, but I'm gonna have uh, a lot better economy and better, better gathering rate very, very soon. So it's it's a trade-off, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go for that. The king might be arriving here soon, so I need to be careful about that. I should get my scout back. And I should also after scout to see uh, which way he is coming from. And also what he's doing. Is he rushing castle? Is he... Okay, there's the king. Is he rushing castle? Is he making an army? This is all info that you need desperately. We got some villagers on gold. We got some villagers on the wood line. And my economy is feeling pretty good. Um, he can't really harass anywhere. I got berries in the back. 
That's very nice. I didn't even realize that until now. Okay. Now, I could go... Let's go limit 10A to help out with that king. So he is rushing castle, it looks like. Let's get that over there. I'm struggling for food a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just make some units and put a little bit of pressure. I'm not going to all in. We're going to put a little bit of pressure and just go from there. We got this in the back, which is very nice. Okay, do some damage there. He's stopping my food gathering, which is a bit annoying. Let's go for holy horticulture. Let's see. Now I could go javelin throwers or I could go camel riders. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, uh, German throws into camel riders, but English doesn't really need to go cavalry, so I'm gonna just go longbows, okay? In this specific matchup. Mm -hmm. Okay, that survives. Let's go into the berries. Now, because I have so many workers on uh, berries and on food, I should be able to try to skyrocket an age up as soon as I can. I do want to get a few more villagers onto the wood line. And let's push, because I know he's rushing castle. Let's get this upgrade too. I know he's rushing castle, so he should not have a lot of units. Or any units, actually. And he might even try to go for King's Palace. So what I can do is come here and deny some gold. Also, I want to check, is he on deer? Uh, is he already on farms? I can kind of educate or, or guess uh, or estimate um, how much he's rushing, how much food he has. He's on berries, which means he's probably running out of sheep. So that's pretty nice for me. I'm coming forward. I can also go for a blacksmith very soon or something like that. I don't know where the king is. So I can put a few limit in a here. Let's go for another house. Let's go for house upgrade. Let's go for mining upgrade. Again, I'm not rushing castle. So I'm not too worried about these things. Put our limit in a here as the reinforcements. And then we're going to try to deny some stuff on, uh, on this side. And I'm not planning to kill him here, right? We're equal eco. I just want to put some pressure, and Longbows will be able to reach that without him being able to do anything about it. I got the house upgrade, and look at that. I'm just gonna chill there. No gold, so even if he ages up now, and I age up later, he's actually gonna have uh, less castle upgrades, less castle units because of that. He could go on the back gold, so I'm gonna swing around there. I'm gonna deny farming here. This is why, in, uh, why it's kind of hard to play if you skip all the units and just age up blindly. Because you can get denied pretty hard. Look how much idle time he has right now. Let's send this hurt limit in the back. Okay, he's in castle. I'm assuming this is King's Palace. Because if it was White Tower, it'd be probably somewhat forward. Yeah, King's Palace, so he's just going more macro. Let's gather these units together. Mm -hmm. And what I also want to do is I want to slowly start collecting more wood because I want to make sure he's back here. I want to make sure I'm slowly transitioning to farms as well. Now I can stop making limit A, make one, two more, just in case of the king. Uh, and I can already start transitioning to some Varangian guards. Look at my army. It's a pretty good army. Mm -hmm. 
Pretty good army. Let's turn this to upgrading so we can upgrade it faster. Okay, he is making a knight. He has knights, okay? So we're not gonna stop our production of limited A because we know he has stables right now. And let's just go all the way around. See what we can hit in the back. I'm gonna switch this back to unit production one. Let's get a cistern there. Now this is maybe me over committing right now because I am very deep behind enemy lines but because of the state of his food income from earlier him having to go on berries and stuff I feel like this is okay for me to do. I'm gonna kill scout with my longbows because scout has no ranged armor and I don't want my spearmen to waste their strong attacks on that okay. Get some farming going and look at that attack. That's not even my main attack. I got more right here. Let's push forward and that's a GG. So this was a, um, a very good game to show how weak King's Palace can be because if he went for um, like in the back if he went for White Tower he would have gotten this gold for free but you can always find an angle. This is why I'm saying like Byzantine is a lot like English. English will do the same thing like this right. So we both went to TC and look how fast I killed him, right? And that's only because I made some units. I didn't all in, I didn't commit, I didn't over commit. I just made some units, pushed him. And right now, his farming eco is actually not that good. I mean, I have five farms. He's got what? Doesn't even have 16. He has 13 farms. My eco is better because I'm on, on berries, which gives me oil as well. And now I can switch to Varangian Guards, I can make Triple Archer range, go Crossbow. This is a very good game to show how much better Eco Byzantine has compared to English. Because we did the same thing. And he also got more villagers because English finishes their TC faster. And you can see what the difference is uh, in mining. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. I'm going to show you right here. So if we go to Economy. So food, I have 200 more or 100 more. Wood, 300 more. Stone, 300 more. Gold, 1,000 more. And then add oil on top of that. So I have like four, four and a half thousand more resources compared to him. And not to mention, I don't think he had a blacksmith yet. I, he might have, but I don't think he did. And I had blacksmith upgrades and unit upgrades, right? Why did he have more bills? English can get a second TC really fast. And there's not much you can do about it. Because you only age up with two as well. And then you don't have to build any defensive units, so it ends up being pretty quick. What say would you recommend for a new player? Um, I have videos explaining like every civilization and how they're played, so I think you should watch that and then check out which one you like the most. There's no sieve that's like best for new players. Like there's few beginner sieves, but also they have different styles, right? So that's something that you should um, you should consider. All right, we got the next game. Let's hope we have a different civilization, and we do. I have a oh wait, this is perfect. I can't believe we got a knight sieve in Rus. We got a uh, and that we fought in feudal. We got English and we got Abbasid, and it's all on the ladder. Like it's not even custom games. That's very good. Now let me tell you. Down with Abbasid. We're gonna go hard. Now, you know how I went 2TC English last game? Do not go 2TC against... Um, against Abbasid. Would not recommend. Kill them and kill them quickly. Burn it with fire. 1TC and go for it. Don't even dare do anything different okay that is my advice for you that is my honest review and honest advice okay good amount of sheep so far that's a very good amount so far that i've gotten obviously that's not all i want i keep making a farm by the way i'm sorry about that listen the build order ignore it i'm just trying to help you learn a game right I, I keep doing it, the farm because I'm so used to it. I don't even think about it. I don't got brain when I play the game. Um, okay. 
Oof, I hate when there's hills like this on the map. It's so annoying. Like, it's so weird to judge the distance between, like, units and stuff like that. Okay, we got three on gold. Uh, cistern is pretty good uh, for now. So second cistern, I'm gonna want to put there. That's a juicy spot. I'm gonna cover both wood lines with that. Basically like a chapel from HRE. And, um, and uh, then the third one is probably gonna be here so I can cover all the farms under here. Make sure all your farms are covered um, around the landmark. Otherwise, yeah, it ain't gonna be good. Knights. Now, regarding, uh, sometimes people ask me this, like, when should you go for the neutral market mercenaries? Honestly, like, in this matchup, I need longbows or I need um, javelin throwers, right? The knights are not gonna give me that much value. Like, my strongest unit from Byzantine that I can make, right, besides mercenaries, is limited A. So, if I were to go here, and I go for knights, then I'm not gonna go knight limit an A. Like, you know, what does that do? Then I have to go archers, but then my sieve has no good stuff for archers, so what's the point, right? There are some situations where you can go for mercenaries from the neutral um, market and stuff like that, but it is not... It's very situational and I wouldn't, you know, be like, oh yeah, you wanna for sure go this uh, neutral market mercenary against that sieve or something like that. Keep it, keep it simple. Um, another small trick that I can show you Have fun. is um, you can pre-build this, okay? So watch this. I'm going to pre-build the, the aqueduct and I'm going to make a little lumber camp there. So that when I age up, I can just put the cistern and we're done. And again, apologies for the vacuum in the back. I know it's loud, but hopefully it's not too, too loud. Hopefully it's not too, too loud. Okay, we're gonna put this on the Electicus so we can get that wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow super fast. The Vows. We're gonna put a house there because when I upgrade it later, that's gonna give me a lot of vision, which is very nice. Okay. Okay, very good. Now we're gonna go scout what he is doing. Should have probably done it a bit sooner, but it's all right. Look at that. Boom. You see that? And now we don't have to wait for the whole thing to finish. You can already um, build it immediately and it's connected and you're chilling. So let's see what he is doing. Because if he's going military school, then I gotta be careful. But it's, the meta right now is echoing quite a bit. Yeah, that is an eco wing. Um, so if he went military school, I would have to maybe pull these guys a little bit back and make an archer range. Um, in order to defend that, and then I can counter push. Zuyun in the top. You gotta decide which one of these two is going to be your production and which one is gonna be for upgrades. That's something you gotta think about. So we're gonna put this one, it's gonna be military. And I'm gonna build blacksmith on the bottom one, so that you can get the um, Dialecticus or Conscripti on it. Okay. We're getting a lot of upgrades. We're gonna get that upgrade too. And we're just gonna go for it. Now, this game I'm gonna go longbows. Now... Javelin throwers are great against Night Sibs, and you can go Javelin throwers against Abbasid. The problem with Abbasid compared to Night Sibs uh, is Night Sibs cannot put out crazy, crazy, crazy amount of um, archers out. Whereas Abbasid, because of their economy, they can actually make so many archers, they overwhelm your Javelin throwers completely, okay? So even though you got a lot of javelin throwers, they can just kind of one-shot them with like 40 archers and then kind of your strength falls off quite a bit and make a house there. But if I am playing longbows, then I have a lot more DPS overall in my army and I can focus on taking down the front lines and dealing with the, the back line after by maybe kiting or you know, something. I'm gonna try to find where his... And we can already start making farms, by the way. 
I'm gonna try to find where your stone center is. Now, this is a. Uh, I'm playing against Abbasid. Okay, he's going Archer Ranger already. I can also go Horseman here, by the way. That would be also a good one instead of this barracks to go Horseman. And that way, um, I force Spearman out of him or something like that. And then my Longbow can have a pretty good punch right after. So let's see. All his golds are forward, which is very nice for me. I'm gonna get plus one range attack immediately. Oh yeah, what I was saying is... Um, the berries are very exposed, but in this matchup, I should be more than fine to just take them without a care in the world. So I can already go to those berries. No need to wait, you know. Let's do it right now. And let's try to deny his gold so he can't get upgrades. Okay. Let's get a house there. And kind of get used to with the Byzantines to have houses wherever you can. So that um, you get a lot of vision. Like, just spread them out. I'm gonna put one there. Okay, he's got a camel. I'm getting another upgrade. I'm gonna get a cistern here. I can get stone gold berries there. And maybe my fourth one is gonna be here then. I'm gonna put one limit to there on patrol just to be able to deny him that goal to make sure he's not getting it and i'm just gonna add a farm here and there like this is not a kill him right now kind of matchup we got time it's all about playing denying look at that perfect okay i don't have enough stone but hopefully i'm gonna have it soon let's get um siege engineering Let's get another house there. So this is the best part, right? I don't need to kill him because I'm in this spot right here. I can actually just make units, take control of this gold, and I can actually age up and then kill him once I age up with the units. Let's connect these. So that's something to have in mind. I'm not on a like a, some kind of timer. Let's actually start rallying to gold. And we're gonna start slowly aging up. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, whoa, 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 that is not good. I had him on A move, and they not only they attacked the mining camp, they just went past to attack the units in the back. Okay, he's still not on the gold, and we know that. I wanna wall this. Let's do a wall like that. It covers bigger surface and it's not gonna cost me that much to wall because he can also run by with the horses, right? So again, something to be careful of. I got all my upgrades. He's still not on gold. He might be selling stuff to, to get gold, which I'm fine with. He can age up with that. Maybe he can get some upgrades, but that's about it. Okay, we get a little pick off there too. Now, if I if I got a couple of good engagements where I killed some units or something, I could have maybe gone for a full full all in. But because this game is pretty standard-ish, um, not no damage was done. But I am d doing damage by denying the gold. I'm just gonna choose to slowly age up. Let's get the house upgrade. He's going there, but that is getting walled. Maybe it's not going to be walled in time. We'll see. He's still not on gold here. Okay. He's going back. I can even kind of threaten with a, with a chiropractor here, but I'm going to lo lose a lot of resources on that. So maybe it's better to just make farms, right? It's like even if I make it, you know, I'm already there. I'm already threatening attacking. So if I make it, it's not like, oh, I'm serious now, by the way. He also did see me going for, um, what's it called? Um, a lot of gold. So he's probably going to know. 
Oh. Okay, he killed two villagers total. So pretty good harassment by him. I'll put some limit in a here. I'll put some longbows there. And let's age up. This guy needs to be very careful. He's coming here. Okay. He's gathering gold there, I can see it. That farming eco is really good for me right now, by the way. Really, really nice. Let's get some houses, like I mentioned earlier, for vision. Oh, yo, yo, he's counterattacking. Again, good, good attack by him. Good attack by him, killed some more units from mine, for villagers. I think I lost like five total now, which is kind of getting a bit, a bit concerning. Now I want to go back and reunite these two armies before I get caught off guard because I am aging up and he is not so I don't want to fight right now I want to I want to chill We're gonna kite he doesn't have a lot of horsemen Pegging with micro and you can see he's just overwhelming the longbows actually because he has so many archers he can actually just overwhelm the longbows completely right now and what i want to do is actually escape with my longbows i don't care much about limit and a i just want to get away with my longbows so let's do that let's get some of the monks let's get some relics we're gonna go back, fight back. We're getting upgrades. I'm getting Varangian guards very soon. And I'm kind of already producing. I'm just waiting for this upgrade to complete. And now we can also do some poking. I'm gonna get plus one range attack. Plus two, sorry. And now my army is strong. Now he's got to be careful. Look, he's instantly doing a run by. Why? Because he can't fight anymore. And he knows. So now he's going to try to age up. Right? He's going to try to age up. And uh, he's basically trying to distract me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, unfortunate. I'm going to try to get the relics. I'm gonna put more on gold because I have a lot on uh, food right now. Okay, he doesn't want me to attack him, so he's probably gonna just keep doing this, going or going around and just doing stuff like this to buy himself time. So I'm gonna try to fight this army. I'm gonna try to catch it because it's right now just running around. And yeah. Uh, I think he saw that one. I need to be careful that he doesn't counterattack me again. Mm -hmm. And now let's go push. You can see how much food I have, and I don't even have that many villagers on my on the farms. It's just uh, very strong eco right now. Okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. Too late walls, brother. Yeah, let's really commit to this. Let's push forward. I'm gonna distract them there. I got one. 
So these longbows are gonna clap, by the way. They're gonna clap and they're gonna clap badly. Now I can say, let's go for a little ram right here. He's chasing my one villager. That is not good for him. I can also go for stone because I want to get um, a TC. And I want to also get um, more cisterns just to keep my eco going. Okay, he ages up. Those archers are going to be very strong very, very soon. So I'm going to try to poke and do some damage before that happens. Let's not try to die, right? So I don't want to overcommit. He's going to have a lot of really good upgrade units soon. Look at those relics coming in home. Let's torch these. Again, I'm just going to torch safe stuff. Like whatever I can kill without losing my chiropractor. Let's go sacred sites. Mm -hmm. He's here. Because where else is he going to be, right? Second town center. Now he could go for a mangonel. Right? Mangonel would be very, very good here. I'm not sure if he has the gold for it. I'm getting plus the ranged armor. And he's kind of starved for gold pretty badly. I could try just YOLO push in here. Because this is a pretty decent angle for me. I see a lot of um, cavalry, by the way. So I'm going to go back to limit the production. I'm going to make some more Varangians as well. And what I do want to get is crossbows eventually as well. Oh, there's a mangano. I'm going to go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Let's go back. Let's not overextend, let's not die. We got a lot of units. A lot, a lot of units. We're capturing Sagar Side. I'm gonna bait, like, let him come out. I'll say, come on. Go ahead. Oh, I didn't have my um, cistern on the upgrade thing. That's why I chose researches as well. And now we can just do some micring, okay? Some extreme micro. You see a mangono? You can go for it. It's not the end of the world, you know? It doesn't mean it's gonna kill your army. It, it just means it's gonna kill your army if you fuck up. I'm just gonna right click it with some units, not all the units. And I have enough longbows to where I can actually do damage to it. Oh wow. That's crazy to repair that. Rolling, we do a little dodging. He shoots. He doesn't shoot. We right click it. He shoots. We dodge. He dies. Making a key. That's okay. Sometimes you don't have time to make pretty farms. Sometimes you gotta make ugly farms. Ugly farms okay. As long as you make farms. No farm is bad. Ugly farms, not bad. And we just go now. Now I'm overtaking him in villagers. So now all the villager lead he had is getting butchered right now. So I don't care if I lose my whole army here. Oh, look at that. And now people are like, well, what do I do now? There's a keep. There's a keep. What do I do? Look at this. I'm going to just mow down his villagers here. Okay, we mow down that keep. Let's go on those berries that I never took. 
Watch this. I know this is a crazy move. I'm gonna buy wood. Are you watching? I'm buying wood. Can you do that? Yeah. Are, are you sure? Yeah. You can buy wood. That's crazy. I know. And now we just spam the ranking guards. Look at that. We're just cranking them out right now. No stopping. Let's rally this thing forward. Let's make another one. What's that? Chiropractors are coming in? He's making another TC. Why? Because he's behind and he needs to catch up. Let's burn the, the thing. And look, he's going for my Lombos, right? I don't care about that. I'm gonna activate Varangian Guard ability so that they butcher these Gulams. And I'm just gonna target fire villagers. Oh, land shits, come on. Can we get a hit there? Ooh. Oh, yo, 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 Let's age up, because why not? Let's get the last cistern, because why not? Is he mining gold there? Go check. Make a boat. Mm -hmm. Now we need gold. And we need a lot of it, right? So I'm gonna start mining a lot of it, and let's just go for the keep again. He's trying to wall. He's got a mango, no? Okay, you say, all right, chill. You got a mango, all right. I want none of that. What are we gonna do first? We're gonna get all our upgrades. Get some more mercenary houses, and it's GG. <clears throat> and by the way, my army production hasn't stopped at all, and I'm Imperial. And again, it's the, the Byzantine eco that is very, very nice. If we look at the villager count, it was a destruction. So again, I'm showing you how to play Byzantine. You don't got a dent in, okay? You can use one of these brains, right? Look how many villagers I lost. I played so shit that game, and you can still win. Just some good micro, uh, some good transitions to castle, and you can come back. Look at my army. It's just never ending. And he's on 2TC here. Now look at his army. Boop. So, yeah. Economy. E economy. Economy. Uh, 23,000 food versus 19,000. I'm assuming he also had farms, right? Yeah, he had farms in the back and in the front. Um, he had more wood because he was gathering a lot more because he couldn't even gather gold. Um, and then I had 5,000 more gold. So even though I was 1 TC and he was 2, I actually had more resources in the end. I did kill a lot of villagers too. So there's that as well. GG's. Yeah, next, yeah, next uh, patch, depending when you're watching this, uh, uh, farms are soon going to be 75 wood. So you're probably 
uh, not gonna be playing with Farm and Dark Age. So we're gonna be doing this game number four. The latter provided us with the first three games. Kaiser is gonna provide us with the last two games. Shout out again to Kaiser, Chad. Um, now we're gonna be doing Mongol versus Byzantine that a lot of people struggle with. And look at that, a shit spawn, which is good because we're playing against Mongol. Um, so he's gonna do the forward power rush and I'm gonna get all messed up and all the good stuff, so... Um, all memes aside, it's it's good that I got this spawn because we'll be able to, you know, play from the hardest uh, possible spawn that you can imagine. So not only my berries are forward, my second berries are forward, and my gold is forward. And that's what we call, uh, in the business, uh, beastie special. It's when basically everything spawns like shit. It cannot go worse. This is it right here. Yeah, beastie special. Now, if you're confused about terminology, Marine Lord special is, is basically it's just the opposite, right? So Marine Lord special would be if this gold and berries were here, here, and you got the back berries. That's Marine Lord special. Uh, but this is beastie special today, so. Now, the first thing we want to do is scout his Uvu to see if he's going for barracks or not, which he is which is what most Mongol players will do in this matchup. And this is considered a pretty difficult matchup for Biz. Uh, and you'll kind of see why. He's Ivy, yeah. Ivy. So, he can do two things. He can Tower Rush the gold right here, or he can Tower Rush the berries, which most likely will be Tower Rushing berries, okay? Because that's, that's what you do. Now, one important thing is I actually I'm going to put four here and I'm going to get some extra gold. And the reason I want to get some extra gold is because I want to make sure I can upgrade my Limitani, Limitane to... Um, I still don't know if it's even Limitane or Limitane, but whatever. I want to make sure I'm upgrading him to Feudal, so I need that extra 35 gold. And also, if the Mongol player comes, you can actually fight him. So there's two ways to defend this. Um, one of the ways to defend a Mongol Tower Rush is to actually fight with your villagers. Now, this requires a lot of micro, so I'm not going to show you that. Because I know if you're playing, if you're, you know, Bob from Gold League, you're not going to be able to have crazy good micro to defend because you need to pull back the weakened villagers and stuff like that. So I'm going to show you the more... The Pega version, which is you just you just let yourself get Tower Rush, basically. And I'm also gonna, since he's not here yet, I'm just gonna mine a little bit more gold. Maybe I get double Broad Axe or something, that'd be cool. I got back berries here, which is nice. Caballarios. Okay. Love the content. Thanks for many laughs and for elevating my gold gameplay beastie laugh. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Maybe I'll go for Wheelbarrow. He's still not here. I Is he just tower rushing here? He's not paying attention to my gold. That's fine by me, too. Let's get Wheelbarrow. I mean, I'm just going to keep mining for as long as I can because I'll get some upgrades at least. And we love that. But I'm assuming this is right now getting towered as we're speaking about it. Now, another thing that's kind of scary for Mongol, so he could have sent Spearman here, but then I can activate Akratoi defense and kill the villager that's building a tower. So maybe that's why he's holding, um, maybe that's why he's holding Spearman here, I'm not sure. Let's build that house over there. But I'm just getting the value out of this gold, right? I'm just gonna get some really, really good upgrades here. There's the tower. And I, I was, no, he didn't get the gold. Okay, good. So I deleted that just before he got the gold, which is very nice. Now I'm going to put a lot of villagers on wood. I want to get some production buildings and we want to make this as well. Now, this is the interesting part. This is what a lot of people don't know or don't really understand. So, a lot of people here would be like, Oh, I need gold for rams or something, right? Watch how I'm going to defend this. I'm going to defend this with Limitane, okay? 
So we're gonna go one barracks. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go limit an A and break this with the shield wall ability. And I might even go double barracks here to make sure I can break that. In this matchup, having sheep is pretty important, by the way, because you are not going to be on berries immediately. You're actually going to lose your berries for a little bit there, right? So that's something to have in mind, and you need to be very careful of that. Now, if you cannot get more food or you're low on sheep or something, you actually have to start uh, transitioning to farms very, very soon. So I'm going to do that just for safety. Let's send three more on wood. And let's start building some of those. I'm going to build a house there. Actually, I'm going to build a house here for vision later on. And what he's going to do now is probably build archers. Let's start cranking those Limitanae out. And I can also start making some farms here. Now he's going for trade. Oh, I saw actually trade move up, but I didn't follow it. It's pretty bad by me. Let's make more farms. I'm going to block this. He's got the upgrade for it to be fast. I'm going to block this just to annoy him a little bit. I'll make him our limit in A. And I'm going to go with around 10-ish would be good. So even though he towered this and I'm not getting bears, he's also not going to be trading. He's going to go all the way up. Okay. So that's going to be pretty annoying for him to uh, for him to deal with, I think. Because he needs to send something there now to defend. Mm. I'm gonna just activate the shield wall on this one guy, whichever one he's shooting. You can see he's switching targets because he noticed that that one's getting shot. And now we're just gonna burn this tower down. We want to burn it before the archers arrive. So that's gonna be our goal here. Okay. Now, what can we do from here? We can go for a little archer range, or maybe even two, and just say, you know what? I can't get that yet, so let's just play it safe. I'm not gonna rush now and try to get this and die. I'm not gonna try to rush get gold. Let's just make archer ranges and then just play from there. These farms. A bit greedy, I should have put them in the back, like here to the side maybe. Even if they're not in the range of uh, your landmark, it's it's okay. You know, you, they don't they don't have to be. Okay. And now we're gonna make some archers. And again, my economy is better, okay? So I'm getting a lot more income. He has a lot more units now, but the longer the game goes, I should have uh, more and more units because of the cisterns and stuff like that. He's gonna camp there. I'm gonna go in the back over here and we're gonna try to do a little sneaky. And when I say a little sneaky... Wait, why was my villager in that farm? I'm gonna try to get that thing in the back. Make a tower there. He has no vision there, so this is going to go up. Guaranteed. And now we can go not only on those berries, but we can get some of that juicy gold as well. We speed build that. Now, if my berries were there and gold, I could have also done it there. But because he, his whole army is here, he's trying to deny me of that. Then I was able to go on this side and get that. I'm going to upgrade it. We're going to get a little cistern here started, just to boost that income a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to lose that. Uh, we can also go for a little wall here. A little house there. Just so I don't get surrounded or attacked from that side. And we're going to want to build a mercenary house very soon. I'm supply capped, but that's fine. Not anymore. 
Now he's usually gonna go Keshik plus archers. So making um, still limit A is usually pretty good, especially if you have a lot of food. Now I do need to actually stop making archers for a moment just to get the mercenary house up. If I wall this, by the way, if he has more units, he can just break it. So instead of just walling and potentially um, losing the wall and losing everything behind it, I decided to just make a tower because he has mass archer, right? So the tower is not really going to be able to be broken as easily. And I can also go for a little blacksmith here. Get some blacksmith upgrades, maybe. Still need the mercenary house. Um, the fuck is that? I forgot a hotkey for that. We're gonna do a little run by here. He's attacking in the back. I'm out of position. I am gonna lose. No, I'm not actually. Okay, I didn't lose a single villager there. Very good. And look at that. He's gonna lose some units for that. Brave maneuver he just did. Keshiks are there. Why is a Keshik right there for some reason? Okay. Instead. We're building a mercenary house, and now we can go javelin throwers or longbows. Now, Mongol can make a lot of archers because of their double production. So actually, in this position, I don't like javelins. If the, if I had my berries and stuff from the get-go, I would have liked uh, javelins quite a bit. But because that's been blocked for a very, very long time, I don't like it because I'm already behind on the javelin. So I actually just need something to add to my army to add to my army's dps if that makes sense and i also want to get these berries as fast as possible now there's a lot of things i can do here i can commit to making a crap ton of units i can try to age up i can just defend and play from here can also wall that back a little bit. I got both upgrades. I don't need um, siege engineering in this matchup. And I'm actually gonna stop mining as much wood. And we're gonna go onto the forward berries. Longbows are coming and now my army is looking really, really good. I got my upgrades for houses. So I'm getting a lot of vision right there. I kind of want to wall there. So you can do some kind of run by there. Now it's a shame I don't have a scout, but it is what it is. I lost it. I can make some more houses and I can soon go for a push. I'm gonna wait for maybe a few more longbows. Oh, cash it's in the back. That's unfortunate timing. Very, very unfortunate timing, but it is what it is. That guy's dead. My army is massive now, by the way. That's a thick army, boy. And my farm transitions are going really, really nicely. And now I want to do a push. And I want to not only hit the trade, I want to hit all his income if possible. Fuck, he's got units here. Okay, he's trying to buy time. I'm gonna go for it. I'm just gonna go for it. He might be aging up and he's trying to buy time or something. I'm not into that, so I'm just gonna go. Oh, 
That's a lot of Kashyyyks to lose, by the way, at this point. He needs those to fight. I'm gonna also sl slowly start uh, rallying to gold. And I'm just gonna go for it. Some more longbows. Let's build a massive wall right there. Destroying the towers. The reason you don't need chiropractors in this matchup is um, if, even if there are towers from him, uh, you can actually just kill them with limit A. So you're completely fine. Now, I don't want to lose my longbows. They're the most important part of my army. That's a lot of archers. I want to save all my longbows if possible. They're the best part of my army. If all this other shit dies, it's whatever. My longbows are doing a lot of work here and a lot of damage. Now what I could do... I have a lot of food. So what I could do as I'm aging up, I can transition to... Um, cavalry. Which is... Let's do that. Okay. I'm almost at the age up. There it is. Golden Horn Tower. Let's make it right there. And what we're gonna do is do what I just said. Look at this. This is gonna be a really good transition. So I could just go Varangian guards, but they're slow and the amount of archers he has is gonna be able to actually kite me really well. So what I'm gonna do instead is we're gonna go mass mass cavalry. What are they called? I forgot their name for some reason. Or uh, not horsemen, but the other guys. Those guys. Let's make some more limit than A. Because I have a lot of food that I can't really spend. Let's go for these berries as well. Actually, I can't. I'm gonna cancel because I don't have wood for mill. Now, he is probably having a really good trade right now. Cataphracts. There we go. Thank you for the chat. Let's upgrade these immediately, right? Those two things we want to upgrade immediately. And let's go for cataphracts. Now this is gonna catch him off guard completely and he should not be making spearmen right now at all because he well, why would he right? I wanna wall this ASAP so I'm just gonna put a couple of villagers on that. Okay I can try to find a fight right here. Now I'm not gonna show him my cataphracts yet I think but I'm gonna try to find a fight Let's see what we can do there. Let's send a couple of units here. And let's upgrade longbow damage. And we're gonna save cataphracts here. Okay, we're not gonna commit with cataphracts yet. I wanna get a much larger number. I'm gonna clean up a couple of these towers though. Get a couple of limit A over there. He just made a tower there somewhere. I'm gonna go clean that up too. He's got 19 traders. Okay. I'm getting plus armor. His army is a lot of archers. A lot, a lot, a lot of archers right now. Okay. And this should catch him off guard completely. I do want to get this too. Okay. 
Okay, that gold is mine now. And now let's go for a fight right there. Let's get this upgrade. And again, we can make a monastery just so we can get gold instead of the other thing. Eight cataphracts is a very good number. We'll make some... What are they called? Make some more... Limit to nades, because why not? Now, he shouldn't have the army to deal with this, because I think I hit the fact that I'm going cataphracts really well. Look at that. Oh, Ooh, that was very nice. He's got a lot of men at arms. Let's activate the shield ability. Oh, I messed up there. I could have probably done a better job protecting that. Okay. Let's send these guys to the bottom. I think I traded really well there, but he has trading eco, so he has a lot of units right now. And I don't want to fight uh, around Kurultai like that. Now, he can't really chase me with that army, so that's something to know. So I'm going to try poke a little bit, maybe, and we're going to keep going cataphracts. And I also want to get another town center. We're pushing in the bottom. Have both of these, yeah. Smart dead con. Look at those longbows. Doing work. And these two cataphracts are going to be able to tank so much and allow me to do so much damage to his units. Like, my longbow DPS is a lot higher and my tankiness is a lot higher than his meta arms are. Look in the bottom what's happening. You guys see that? What's happening in the bottom is I'm winning the game right now. We kite here. He's chasing. That's fine. We kite. We kite. We kite, look at that. Let's activate shield wall so our units can tank. Let's attack the top side again. Mm. Let's get a second town center. Let's run away. Make some palisade or palings there, whatever it's called. And let's go for some more gold. Go more cataphracts. Now, I've done a lot of damage to his uh, traders. I've done a good amount of damage to... Uh, his army, right? I killed a lot of his important units. What I need to do now is transition to more farms. One relic is inside here, but that's, that's okay. Whatever. And now I think I have enough to go for the killing blow. We're gonna send these two cataphracts to go to the bottom. They're gonna be very annoying to deal with. Cataphracts have a lot of HP, so they're very tanky. You can't just send like two spearmen to kill them or something. You need a lot of stuff. I wanna kill this because it's very annoying. Uh, and it uh, has a sprinkled upgrade as well. Get eco upgrade. Mm -hmm. Let's send one cataphract here. 
And even though he had a lot of traders, and you could see that the game went okay for him in terms of trading, I didn't really stop it. You can still take some good trades and manage to get a win. Those villagers are mowed down. I don't want to fight in the range of this. And it's just gonna GG. So another thing I could have done is once I went limit and to destroy this, I could have gone for horsemen. I could have like once I cleaned up, so you could go on like limit and some archers, kill the spearmen, then go horsemen. You can fully commit or all in, or you can do something like this. And the problem is, if you're wondering like why didn't he make more spearmen or something like that, the game is in a very weird situation because he he's late to this kind of like spearman transition. So what would have happened if he made spearmen? I have 34 longbows. I can absolutely butcher, like if you had 10 spearmen, they're gonna die in like one volley, right? So what he did is more correct in this case. He went for men at arms because I have so many longbows to tank and he went crossbows behind it. The problem is my longbow mass is so big that even the men at arms are dying. If he went for um, uh, main gunnel, the cataphracts would actually just charge through all the units and kill the main gunnel immediately. So, yeah, and, main, and, and cataphracts are very tanky. 360 health is crazy good. And at this point, my farming is looking good. I forgot to change this to conscriptio again, so I've been producing these a bit slower, but it is what it is. Sometimes you don't get the perfect setup, right? Because the game is chaotic. Um, but yeah, I got three relics. I'm taking the fourth one, I think, and one was on this side. So, yeah, GG. Let's see, the economy counts. Obviously, he had more, but Mongol wins not with better units. They win with better economy or trading or pressure, right? Because my units are a lot better. So he has to kind of either win fights and then remax, or not even win fights. He needs to trade and then remax, or needs to do eco damage to me, so I have less units than than he does. Why not a horseman against these traders? If you go horseman, so you have to go limit the at the start to break the tower. Look, that's not a, that's not negotiable, right? You have to do that. You could make a chiropractor, but you need like, two twenty gold just to make one. Or uh, how much gold? It's sixty gold now, right? So you're gonna need like 185 gold to make one. And I feel like that's not worth it. And it's a lot easier to make limit than A. After that, you need to make archers because he has like 10 spearmen. So if you go horsemen immediately, he already has units to counter them. So he actually doesn't need to make any more spearmen. What he can do is fully commit to Keshik Archer. And then you're just gonna be severely, uh, you're gonna be severely far behind unit comp wise have because fun. you have horsemen against Keshex and you have some limit A against his archers um now the horsemen are a big drain on the food so if you do go horsemen that means that you're going to need to actually gather a lot of food which is going to delay your age up and if you're all inning you can do that because you're fully committing to breaking that but i like to go for more like all around approach where it's like i don't need to win right now i can just buy myself some more time so you can do that but yeah all right we're playing against hre and of course we got that gold in the front Go for it right there and we're not gonna do the farm okay i finally remembered <laughs> now HRE matchup is very specific and very unique, but you can play like this against um, OTD, you can play like this against Japanese, you can play against a lot of silly. Because HRE has Chapel, and because HRE has really good eco, and because HRE has emergency repairs, it's usually very hard to break HRE and they edge up fast. So if you go for one TC push, you might not be, maybe you will, but you might not be in time, especially if the gold is in the back to break the tower. And then they're gonna get to castle and you're gonna die. And HRE can actually go burger against Byzantine. So um, what most players at the top level do, they actually just rush castle with Byzantine as well, because it feels pointless trying to, um, fight it in feudal kind of thing now um 
There are some other matchups where you can use the Eastern, I think it's Eastern Contract. Uh, where you open with, with Keshix. Or potentially in this matchup you could open with Royal Knights from the neutral, uh, neutral um, a trade post. But a lot of players actually go for um, Grand Winery and then they get enough uh, oil and then they go a few Keshix to harass while aging up themselves. So that's what we're gonna do here. I don't have, I'm gonna be honest, I don't have a lot of experience with this. Um, so I'm not sure how well I will do it, but I guess we will see. Maybe I'll fail, maybe I won't. It is what it is. If we fail, it is what it is. And what Keshex give you basically is the ability to, by the time he gets to knights, it gives you the ability to fight the knights, because you're gonna have like six Keshex, and it gives you ability to deny um, relics. Right, because if you went for Limitane and, and like Longbows, you can't really deny relics, because if you get caught, you're dead. But Keshex can do a lot of work there. Now, you could go Hippodrome, but I feel like if you go Hippodrome, you're kind of all inning maybe a little too much, even though your Keshex are going to be stronger. But then you're not going to have enough berries, uh, enough oil to actually produce those Keshex. Now we can do a little wall there. We definitely need a tower in the front at some point. Not early on, because he's HRE, so I'm not too worried. Now we do want to get a house. We do want to get a mercenary house. And probably that's it. Probably just straight to castle after that. I got bears in the back here. Which is all right. Let's make a house right there. Got a lot of third berries should be here. I think. Okay, maybe here. Where's my third berry? Oh, it's here. Okay, did not see that. Let's go scout it so I don't forget after. Right. Let's go for Mercenary House. Thank you. Let's go Mercenary House. Let's go... For a little cistern right there. And then we're gonna go for an age up slowly. Mm-hmm. We're gonna go scout, but I'm pretty sure I know what he's doing, right? I don't think I'm gonna be surprised, like, oh my god, he's going mine work. And let's go for the Eastern Mercenary Contract, which again, not very popular. You can also go for Horticulture if I wanted to, because I am gonna be spending a lot of time on berries, so it's not a bad idea. Uh, this looks like he's staying in feudal. Need to make a tower immediately. Yeah, he might be staying in feudal here. It's a lot of workers on wood. But I can still do the same thing. Getting horticulture. He's going to horsemen. Okay. What else does he have? This might be also like just a few farms into Egypt. Like not like a super um, rushing castle no matter what build. Mm -hmm. We got some Keshix on the way. So I can not only defend but do some counter pressure as well. Uh, I might get wheelbarrow here too, because I'm gonna go in the other berry soon, so I kind of want that movement speed. He's gonna try to harass my berries in the back, you can already see he's going for it. He's spreading the deer. I mean, I'm not gonna go for that, but he's got nothing else to do, right? So, as well. 
Okay, let's go across the map. I do want to wall this, but there's a massive wall. So maybe we're gonna chill with that for now. Making a little house. I'm gonna get some more wood. Just so that I can, uh, you know, make some walls, maybe get a blacksmith or whatever. Okay, he's not on gold. He has a lot of farms, so his eco is gonna be really good. Yeah, his eco is gonna be really, really good. Let's get double broad axe and let's also go for these berries first because they're forward and uh, they're going to be easier to defend. He's got a lot of horses actually. I'm going to play defensive because I'm the one rushing castle and he's not. So I don't feel like uh, I need to do damage to him, I just need to defend here. Still a wall here, that's a good wall, so he can't go around here, and I kind of have him here. Where the hell did he go? I think he went back. Uh, I can also do a wall here, just for safety. And I'm gonna get a uh, wheelbarrow as well because my economy wasn't perfect because he's been trying to harass and stuff. Oh! I so I canceled the edge of that wall so that I can make that, or so they can sneak through, sir. And now we're gonna age up. Okay, now I can rally to wood now because I would like to get some uh, more wood for blacksmith upgrades and stuff. And now the idea is that I get the relics first. Right? Now, if he just aged up, the idea would be the same. I would be aging up faster because I would have more workers on food, not so many like building stuff or whatever. Mm -hmm. Good trades for me. And he, he's trying to prevent me from going across the map, so I'm gonna do exactly that. Let's get a blacksmith right there. Oh, yo, yo, that is a lot of stuff. Okay, let's be careful. I need to get. I need to get more production buildings. Good pick up right there. I can also go get um, plus one steel arrow because he seems to be very committed to this. I can also get stone so that I can get um, my sheep situation is not great so I can get mangonel tower perhaps that would be quite nice to have and from here on out we can go Merengue guard crossbow most likely so let's get those I don't need a lot of food right now. And let's just start getting relics as well. So this is a bit of a weird game. So 
so I do want to try to deny the relics. Let's go for that too. And let's try to deny them and take them for ourselves. If I deny three, I would be pretty happy with that, I think. There's one relic off here, which I don't know exactly where it is, but I'm gonna try to find it. I'm gonna put one Keshik down there. Okay. I feel like we got enough stone for a while now. Okay, we're trying to deny I love you less than three. I'm trying to deny as much as I can, and there's a lot of happening, so I'm like, oh. Okay, very nice. Let's go for a second PC here. I feel like pretty safe, like I can't die right now. So I'm gonna just use this opportunity immediately to try and age up. Or sorry, not age up. Get a second PC and get some more eco behind me. That is a lot of units from him. I will say that. I can also go Gulans because I don't think I'm gonna get much value from these Keshiks anymore. They've kind of done what they needed to do, which is to force a lot of spearmen from him. This guy... Aye, the relic was right there! That's unlucky. The relic was right there, just outside of the range of the Keshek. Ah, uh, we can put him there to maybe deny some of those things. And what is my goal now? I took two relics, he took three relics, so obviously not amazing, not perfect, I would love to have more, but it is what it is. So what I'm gonna do now is just try to play a normal game from here on out, and try to transition and try to just play on, right? Bring your poor sister there. He is not on this deer. He's probably not gonna go on deer. His eco, I think, is really good. I'm gonna upgrade limit an eight just in case he goes through some kind of shenanigans. And I can also use these Kashiks now to go raid. I have a decent eco. Not amazing, but decent. Let's try to transition to more farms. I still have berries here, so I can also get those. I have berries there. And I'm making a lot of units. I also have Mangonal Tower here, which is going to be pretty hard to break for him. Let's get eco upgrades. And from here on out, it's just a normal, normal macro game. Let's upgrade the houses. Probably do need some more uh, villagers and gold. Let's go harass with these. And these guys are going to stay back. I can also make a little wall here. The reason I'm going to make a wall is if he's trying to break it, this mangle tower is going to do quite a bit of work. Two relics, like I said. He's got a lot of melee units, so I could get fitted letter work. Letter working, whatever it's called. And from here on out, I need to see if he is all inning or if he is um, gonna age up to Imperial. If he's gonna go Imperial, I'm just gonna stop producing units and I'm gonna just chill and boom with my eco. If he is all inning, then I gotta prepare for it. That's a lot of units, but I'm not seeing anything that's telling me what he's gonna do one way or the other. This is a very good raid. Yeah, this is a very, very good... He's still making a lot of spearmen. Now... Mm -hmm. Okay, some more villagers here. Let's pick those up. I'm making some gulams as well now. Because again, I don't wanna... I don't feel like I need to make more cash eggs. We're gonna go on the gold in the back. 
A lot of spearmen and a lot of men at arms from him. Okay. I think that's fine. Uh, third sacred set should be here. I'm gonna put one unit on patrol. Okay. And I'm just buying time with these Keshigs that I'm just running around with. Not good. Just making more units. Mm -hmm. We can go for some houses, like I was mentioning earlier, right there. Yeah, I still don't know exactly what he's going for, so I'm just gonna chill for now. He's still making units, though. Good harass once again. Let's make a little mangonel tower right there. Okay, a couple more. Rep. No, have in mind, I'm on two TCEs on one. I'm actually gonna keep making gulams. I was gonna save oil, but I'm gonna keep making stuff. That's a big army. But you know what? So is mine. Mm. Go for another run by. The only thing that I'm worried now is if he is making like mangonels or something. But I'm making mangonel towers. And I am ahead, so I don't feel pressured to go and end the game or anything like that. I feel pretty pressured to just chill, actually. Mm -hmm. It looks like he is not gonna age up. The way he's moving his units is kind of telling me like he doesn't really want to fight, he's just cleaning up stuff from the side. Or maybe he's gonna go for sacred selection. To be determined. Let's kill a couple there. That's not a lot of units. Maybe I can jump that. Yeah, he's definitely trying to go for sacred sites. I don't know if he's trying to go sacred sorry win, but that is not a lot of units. So I'm gonna catch that. But Keshi can patrol on the side, see what's up. And I'm just gonna age up and not let him have the sacred sides for himself. I don't wanna have something silly happen like me slowly losing to sacred side win. So let's not have that kind of game. Um, Okay. Yeah, he's preparing towers there as well, so he was definitely going for it. Okay. Let's go back. I'm gonna need a lot of gold because I have a lot of upgrades that I want to get to. Let's just go back. I could have also captured these sacred sites with my guys. 
That's alright. I would like to get more food though. A lot of my food is actually deer, which I actually need better stuff there. Okay, let's go for all the upgrades. I have 25 crossbows. That is worth upgrading. Let's go for a little system right there, boost my eco even further. Byzantines still like calculus to me. Love the way you speak your train of thought lately though Beastie. Really helps us. Thank you brother, appreciate it. Um, I'm not gonna go... I was gonna go elephants, but he has too many spearmen. I want him to stop making spearmen, and then I'm gonna go elephants, okay? Um, I need a lot more gold. My gold income is not good still. Okay, he's aged up too. Let's try to look for a fight while I have the eco advantage. Or at least try. Let's try and break this. And let's try and just go for it. Let's see what we can do. Is there a bombard tower here? No? Okay. We go in. Boom, dead. Oh, he's got a lot of land sheets. Oh, God. Oh my god, my units are getting stuck on each other. Okay, that fight was not it, but it's okay. Like I said, you can make mistakes. Just fix them after. Forehead. We're gonna get mining upgrade. And what I want to do is send these guys over there. Some guys over there. And now we got nest of bees to fight with. So what is my goal here? I would really like to get a hold to get a hold of those units. Uh, sorry, of the the goals on the map. So I'm gonna start fighting around those to try to make that happen. Look at that. Got some hand cannoneers. We got some nest of bees. We got four nest of bees actually. And I don't even need Siege Workshop at this point, I can just keep producing uh, Nest of Bees and Cannons, which are very good. Very, very good. And I want to deny his goals as well. This is the next goal that I'm going to go for in the world. Let's get our upgrades sorted. Let's go around here. So he still has some spearmen and he has crossbows, so I don't really want to go elephants yet, but we can make that switch very, very soon. Okay, he's on the goal there. We go there ASAP. I'm gonna make one monk, let's take that. I got the um, eco upgrades for mining, which is very big because I'm gonna get a lot of bonus gold. Let's go for royal cannon in case there's... Actually, no, I don't need it yet. I'm gonna just save my oil for now. 
I'm gonna just respond to what he is doing instead. I'm just taking the map control basically right now. Let's go for chemistry. Don't really have enough farms. I would like to have some more. So let's do that. His uh, landmark is rallied there, that's why he's losing everything. I'm gonna get Mangunal upgrade and Bombard upgrade. Obviously, they're very strong. Look at that. The sprinklers are doing work. I do want to get Siege Workshop so I can get the movement speed upgrade. Now we want to send the cannon here. Okay, he's a culverin, but can I do some good damage here? Let's run away. I should win this fight easily. I can also activate the Berserking ability and go dent in the fucking culverin. Colburn's dead, very good, and let's regroup. Now, that looks a lot better. Eco-wise, I mean. Let's capture sacred sites. I'm gonna go back, but not for long. We're gonna go back right in. Can make towers, maybe upgrade them a little bit. And now we need more production buildings. I've been running off of like very few production buildings so far. So I wanna up that. 124 workers, very good. I, I cancel my towers. Okay, now we go again and we hopefully end the game here. And now I would go elephants, okay? Because he doesn't have um, spearmen anymore. So now would be a very good time to go elephants. Look at that damage. Look at that damage. Look at this. Ready? Look at this. Boom, brother! Cannons are strong as Ooh. And now, you can do something like this. A little market right there. Elephant is out. We do a little market right there. We get some stone. Like that. Make more barracks. Say go back and chop them trees. And now we just go for the for the final countdown kind of push. It's the final all right, my army is very big, very, very big, very strong. He's got to keep here. We say, okay, and we go destroy it. Okay. We want to upgrade the uh, cavalry HP upgrade because of the elephants. And we want to get siege technology as well. And you can see how fast the cannons take down stuff, it's crazy good. Just trying to engage onto my siege, I can't let you do that. And now, let's go. Now the Rengen guards, they gonna clap, let me tell you. They gonna fucking clap right now. Mm. Why am I not capturing sacred sites? Rengen guards, we turn on our ability. 
And now we let them do their thing. Ranger guards are insanely good in Imperial. And they're gonna absolutely butcher everything. To the point where I could even stop making uh, hand cannoneers and I just go pure Varangian Guard. They will actually kill the HRE men at arms as well. So, we're very good. And now we can go elephants. I feel like that would be a pretty good choice here too. Mm -hmm. Do something like that, and that's GG. Ferengian Guard, once they use their ability, they get a crazy amount of damage. Uh, so they can actually kill H. Harry Men at arms one on one. And that's a GG. So even though this contract is not the most popular, it can have its use. And then elephants in Imperial are actually pretty good. You got tower elephants. Thank you guys for the games, I appreciate it. What I could also do, by the way, I, I didn't see this, but if I did, I would have done it sooner. You could actually go for Mercenary House here and make War Elephants, which are the Melephants, which are very, very, very strong, and you can fucking butcher your opponents with that. Uh, so that's a thing you can do. Also, Tower Elephants cost 1,000 oil. These guys cost 750. These guys are actually better, okay? In the current state of the game, they're better. Now, I could have also gone for Arbretria. Sipahi probably not good in this matchup, but these guys would destroy HRE. They're the best crossbows in the game. So I could have gone for something like Varangian Guards plus them, and that would be a very good comp. So there's always like a lot of variations and options you have as Byzantine, making it a very, very strong civilization. And last but not least, let's talk about the matchups. So we have done five different matchups. So I hope you guys learned something there. Byzantine Mirror, I know it's a, like very tempting to go for Javelin Throwers, but go Spear or Limitane plus uh, Longbows. Uh, basically, Javelin Throwers or Camel Riders are going to be pretty useless in Castle Age, but Longbows and Land Shits are going to be very, very good. So, yeah, just play 1TC, play normal. Against Japanese, you can go for an all-in and you can kill them with an all-in. You can also go for the fast castle Asia with Keshe's, kind of like what I did here. Against Abbasid, we played Ayubid. Uh, I would, I think this is a pretty hard matchup for Ayubid. Uh, Ayubid wants to fast castle, but they can't really do a super fast castle, so you will have time to actually pressure them and kill their um, tower on the gold and deny them from gold and then it just becomes a very weird game for Ibid. So I think this is a very hard matchup for Ibid, in my opinion. China or Jushi, you can do three different things here. You can do fast castle, get the relics with some harassment. Uh, you don't need to go Keshix if you go fast castle, by the way. You can go longbows in these matchups and put some pressure with like two, three limitane and, and just longbows into fast castle you can do an all-in or you can even do 2tc depending what you feel most comfortable in french and jd are pretty bad matchups for them pretty good matchups for you i would suggest you go limit an a plus javelin throwers uh not only you get javelin throwers to kill archers but you also get camel riders for castle and imperial that not only you're going to counter cavalry but also it's going to give you bonus armor um in imperial if you go for the landmark i just went whatever it's called siege net seed goblin engineering i don't know what's it called um hre and otd we kind of went through it uh this matchup i would say is probably in my opinion the the weirdest one and the hardest one hre and mongol are probably the hardest and weirdest matchups where there's a lot of weird shit happening and it's very dependent on what your opponent is doing and how you react to it OTD, I would say, is an easier version of HRE. Deal with Delhi versus Byzantine. This matchup is actually disgustingly favored for Biz, uh, in my opinion. Now, I haven't played this matchup since the Pro Scouting uh, patch, so it might be better for Delhi because now you can get the carcasses under your TC. But what you actually want to do in this matchup is uh, horsemen into longbows. And even if they're making mass gazis, you can just continue making horsemen longbows and you will have uh, same amount of units and you can age up a lot faster than Delhi can. 
English. We went through that many different ways to play against English. You can literally do anything. I personally like this matchup from Byzantine point of view, but I think it is a pretty even matchup. Uh, Byzantine versus Malian. Uh, there's two ways to play this, either by doing a Tower Rush in Dark Age, like every Civ, uh, on their gold, or you can go Horseman plus Longbow and just do a strong, strong push. Uh, and I think this is a matchup that's pretty hard for Malian, um, especially if you get some good pickoffs early on with Longbows, and you need to, no matter what matchup you're playing, you need to keep your Mercenaries alive. That's the best part of your army, is army from other Civs. Uh, Mongol, we went through it, pretty rough matchup. Ottoman, you can do anything. Again, Ottoman is pretty slow right now. Uh, and both Longos and Javelin Throwers are really good against Ottoman. I would probably suggest Javelin Throwers because of Sipahi. You want to have Camel Riders later on for Sipahi and you want to have Javelin Throwers against Janissaries. So, I would suggest you go for that. And then Rus, uh, we also played against it. So kind of self-explanatory. Now, regarding uh, next patch, which is coming very soon. Like, as of uploading this video, the patch is going to come in like a day or two. So depending when you're watching this, this was recorded in October 2024. Uh, it is still going to be a good guide later on, unless Byzantine goes through some insane changes where the Civ is not even the same anymore. But I kind of explain my thought process behind it playing Byzantine. In general, the next patch is nerfing melee units. Uh, because they lose 20% HP from Elite Army Tactics. Uh, Byzantine farms are going to cost 5 more wood, which is not that massive. It's a, it's a small nerf, but it is not that massive. Now, what is happening is something very interesting. You're getting Silk Bow, Silk Road Bow, whatever it's called, the upgrade. It gives you range on your ranged units. You, you have Javelin Throwers, which I'm pretty sure it works on them, or at least it should, because they're ranged units. Uh, and your longbows will also get this upgrade. So you have longbows, pretty much like English, so you're gonna get very good value from that. Your Varangian guards are gonna be weaker, but biology is gonna give 10% extra HP for your cavalry, so cataphracts are actually gonna be insane because they're gonna have batshit amount of HP, and your elephants are going to have 10% extra HP compared to what, what they have now. Now, regarding Siege, uh, Byzantine is not a very Siege-focused civilization. So you're not, you know, aging up and rushing Mangonels. It's usually the opposite. Uh, you have a big longbow stack, so the enemies will make Mangonels against you. You don't really have uh, a wood plus gold economy to support mass Siege in Castle. So I think the fact that Siege is getting changed or nerfed is good for you. And regarding all your other yeah, seeds that you have from oil like nest of bees nest of bees is not getting nerfed it's getting nerfed in damage a bit but it has like the tracking missiles basically uh the cannon is going to be the best bombard basically in the game so that's nice for you and then you have pow pow which is obviously the best trebuchet so i think overall the new patch uh yes varangian guards will be nerfed and limit the nay will be slightly worse because they can tank less in imperial until imperial they're still going to be good but overall i think this patch is not going to negatively affect byzantine so if you're watching this on youtube thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this i hope you learned something new check me out on twitch i'm probably live right now if you're watching on twitch let's keep going